we're travelling through a mouse's brain. Each colour represents the branches of a different nerve cell. Right now we're in the space normally occupied by a blood vessel. But diving into the thick tangle of nerve branches, you can see how dense and complicated the anatomy is. This is a reconstruction of a real piece of mouse retina, showing the precise shape and location of 950 cells. The researchers who made it say mapping each neuron was an almost insurmountable challenge. First, the tissue had to be sliced very thinly and imaged by an electron microscope. The images were then analysed by a computer, which assigned different colours to different structures. The computer was very good at determining the volume of each structure and identifying synapses, where one cell connects to another. But to join up the coloured sections and reconstruct the long branches of each cell in three dimensions, it needed help. So 300 students spent a total of 30,000 hours carefully tracing the path of each neuron to tell the computer how to join up the coloured blobs. Together, computer and students created this. But was all that effort worth it? This block with its hundreds of neurons represents just 0.06% of the retina. Imagine scaling up to a whole mouse brain, or even a whole human brain where there are over 80 billion neurons. Sceptics of this approach, known as connectomics, say it's too time-consuming and question how much we actually learn about brain function. But enthusiasts argue that if you want to really understand the brain, you'd better get mapping. Three studies published this week in Nature show that mapping brain tissue in great detail is giving us new insights into the visual system. The retina is the best studied bit of brain, Yet this map surprised scientists by revealing a new type of cell, one that's evaded other detection methods because it's quite rare. There it is, XBC, a type of bipolar cell that relays visual information from photoreceptors to other cells in the network. It's a noticeably different shape to other known bipolar cells. The other two studies looked at the retina of a much smaller animal, the fruit fly. They tackled a classic problem in neuroscience, how the brain detects movement, obviously really important to a fly. For 50 years we've had a vague idea how this works. The new studies finally pin down the mechanism. The first group patiently mapped several hundred neurons and, by analysing their connections, identified motion detection circuits – each one wired to detect motion in a particular direction. The second group studied the same area of fly brain, but instead of just mapping, they looked at cell activity. Photoreceptor cells in the retina can't detect motion, so they focused on two downstream processing neurons called T4 and T5. Using fluorescent markers that glow when a neuron is active, they showed that T4 and T5 neurons are divided into four subpopulations and, like the previous study, they showed that each subpopulation responds to motion in one of four cardinal directions – left, right, up or down. The precise wiring mapped by the first group shows how information moves through the network and so how the direction is actually detected. Together, these three studies demonstrate that extraordinarily detailed anatomy, combined with physiology, is furthering our understanding of the brain. Well, a tiny bit of fly or mouse brain. Will we one day be able to map a whole human brain? To scale up, the mapping process needs to be fully automated and cheaper, and the data from a human brain could fill millions of terabyte hard drives. Computer pattern recognition isn't yet good enough to trace long branching neurons, so full automation is a way off. 
For now, researchers are making neuron tracing into an online game so they can crowdsource data and map larger areas. That's right, leading the next generation of neuroscientists could be you.